Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at Big O Notation. What it is, why it's important, and how you can get started thinking about it. The concept of Big O is this kind of nebulous term that shows up a lot in software engineering interviews when people are asking about the efficiency of a given program or an algorithm. But it's helpful in day-to-day -day programming life in that the term Big O helps frame your thoughts by putting a word to the concept of program efficiency, which admittedly is relatively, or I would even say, pretty abstract. So what is it actually? I like the definition that comes from the Interviewing Cake website, which I have up here, and I'll put a link for in the description. The site basically says, and I'll modify it a, a little bit, that big O notation is how we express the runtime of executing an algorithm in terms of how quickly it grows as the input gets relatively large. So, wow, what does all that mean? A lot to think about, right? <laughs> so, uh, I want to give you an analogy to make the concept a little less abstract. So say you have a pile of dirt in your backyard and you need to get rid of all of it and you have a wheelbarrow to do so. And say further that it takes 10 trips in total for you to move it all. Now imagine that you also have nine friends and that they're all kind people with wheelbarrows who would love to help you. Now instead of moving the pile of dirt in 10 trips by your lonely self, you and nine friends are taking one trip and all doing, so each person is doing one trip and there are a total of 10 people. That's all, that's, that's taking care of all the dirt there. Um, there's a cost though, which is that now all of a sudden there are 10 people in your backyard trying to get in place, possibly getting in each other's way. And you might want to buy them pizza at the end to say thank you, because you're a good friend too after all. It could be that the time and space optimal solution is to have a total of five, five people and have each of them make two trips each. That'll complete the task and you'll have to deal with less bumping into each other and probably have to purchase fewer pizzas. People have to do more trips, but it's sort of a give and take on that, right? I don't know what the answer is to that exact scenario. You have to figure that one out on your own, but I would say always be generous when feeding your friends pizza. Now the same thing applies to algorithms. If you have a set of numbers to crunch or you're doing some given operation on an input of some kind, sometimes an array, for example, you can do you can come up with a solution that's very space efficient or time efficient or optimized for both. It's going to take up a lot of RAM or it's going to take up a lot of time or somewhere in the middle, right? And it's sort of up to you to use the concept of quote unquote big O to frame that conversation in your head or with others to find out what's best overall. Now, we're going to continue this pile pile of dirt analogy, but algorithms are a lot more complicated, and so you'll have to hang with me as the analogy continues and we encounter dirt with multiplying superpowers and infinite bulldozers, and it's just gonna it's just gonna get really crazy. All right, <laughs> so we're going to go through some of the some of the notations that you see uh, of Big O out in the wild, and the first one is called O of one. You can see that here. It's called constant time, and it's the easiest to imagine in our dirt pile scenario. So, it so constant time basically signifies that the amount of work that has to be done will be the same regardless of your input. Now, instead, imagine that instead of wheelbarrows, you have a bulldozer of an undefined size. And what that means for you is that regardless of if you have a person-sized pile of dirt or a house-sized one or a whole city block, this undefined, undefinedly large bulldozer can push all of the dirt out of your yard in one shot. It just has to be done once and then it's your whole task is completed. That's, that's pretty awesome. I would love to have an infinitely sized bulldozer. Um, <laughs> Now the second, the second notation to know is called O of n, 
which is colloquially called linear time, and the n in here refers to the number of items in your input. So for the dirt analogy, imagine that some malicious sprite dropped a wheelbarrow of dirt onto your previously 10 load pile. Now you have to take 11 trips, so that's pretty annoying, but it is one new pile or one new load of dirt, and that means one, one more for you to, to get rid of. And every time the sprite comes by and drops more dirt on you, the more trips you have to take. So linear time just means that as you add more inputs, you have more to work through. Your array had 10 items before, now it has 11, now it has 100 or whatever, right? The next one to know is O of n squared, which is where things get pretty dicey. And in fact, for hmm, so for for the for the dirt pile scenario, you imagine that there's an identical one that just springs into existence, probably the sprite striking again. So before, whereas you originally had a 10 load pile, you now have two 10 load piles that you have to get out of your yard. That's super annoying. And if the sprite comes in and adds an 11th load to your pile, there springs into existence an 11th load in the second pile as well. Rude, super rude. Let's get rid of this guy. So for the, for the last notation, that's that's helpful to know. It's called log n, and it refers to the the log is short for a logarithm. And for for that example, that oh so the the concept of that is that the amount of work halves as you iterate through your your dirt or your data set, depending on you know where we are in the analogy. So say, for example, that the sprite comes up to you and says, I've had my fun for the day, but let's just get rid of all this dirt for you so that you don't have to go through n square loads of dirt to get rid of it all. So he says, I put a button inside this, this original pile of dirt, and if you push the button, if you can find it, then it will just open up a wormhole and all the dirt disappears. That is my final gift to you. Now, to find it, the sprite says you pick a half, a half of the pile, either the top left, or sorry, either the top or the bottom, or the left or the right, whatever. You pick half, I'll tell you yes or no that it's in that half or not. And so you say, okay, I pick the top half. And he says, yes, it's in the top half. And that eliminates you needing to look through the bottom half at all. So he says, yes, it's in the top half. Now you say, I think it's in the left half. And he says, no. And so you eliminate that and you know that the button is somewhere in the top right quarter of the pile. And you can keep going. You, you know, you can say, I think it's in the front half or the back half and so on and so on. And every time you make a guess and he says yes or no, you're able to eliminate half of what's left. And so it doesn't take too long for you to get down to, you know, a handful size pile of dirt and you stick your hand in and sure enough, the button is there, you push it, all the dirt goes away, the sprite goes away, you buy pizza for yourself and you're just very happy. Maybe you have your friends over anyways just to celebrate. So that's that's the, the concept of of O of log n that that half goes away each time. One of the places where you see this a lot in the real world is with a binary search, and that basically says you have an array, a sorted array of elements, and where is a given number in that. And that's all about saying, okay, is the number that you're looking for greater or less than the middle item? And if it's greater, you eliminate the half that it's not in and just keep on going until you actually find it. Login is really great and it's very um, it's very insensitive to 
time because of the fact that, you know, if your if your input just gets super, super huge, it doesn't take that many more iterations to pare down because of the fact that you lose half every single time. I will probably make a, a separate video for binary search and give you some more visuals just to make that more concrete. But imagine the sprite taking away piles of dirt or parts of piles of dirt and you getting to have a nice clean yard and pizza and friends. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.